The Iowa Hawkeyes falling for the second straight game, 66 to 50. The Hawkeyes fall to 0 2 in the Big Ten Conference, 8 and 5 overall on the season. I'm joined by Coach Gary Close. I'm Corey Brad here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. And I wish we had better news to report to everybody, Gary. Um, we've got a lot to get to here. But uh, I guess my first question for you, and, and maybe you're going to tell me uh, I'm being overreactive, but uh, what happened to this team? a week and a half ago, is is there an indicator to you that something changed? I mean, how do you explain these last two performances? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. I think, um, you know, their guard play has really dropped off uh, when I thought in the beginning of the year uh, they were playing much better. They have, they have really struggled uh, these last couple games. Um, And I think part of it is you lose, you lose a couple of players and all of a sudden you got players playing different, having to do different roles and they're just not ready, ready for that. And um, uh, this team's got such a small margin of error that to go that long without those guys and try to put it all together with a, with a big break. And, and then you throw on top that they got outworked uh, and out toughed and, and um, that, which is discouraging. And then you get, you get a game like that. So um they, they've got some work to do. I don't think there's any question. Their guard play is really shaky right now. I think I was looking at the stats. I think um, Perkins, Bowen, Euless, and Sanford shot two for 24 um, and didn't show any real toughness at all. I mean, a lot of their shots were looked like they were just hoping that they were going to go in. Uh, and then you throw in the two McCaffreys, who are better shooters than they showed tonight, and it's like five for 41. Well, there's no way you're going to win. You're going to win a game like that. So um that's where it starts especially on the road you got to have good guard play on the road and they just they didn't get any guard play at all and um and then that, and then I thought they got outworked and, and out toughed and so that combination led to a rather embarrassing loss to your point here are the stats for people who are just joining us and we're going to get to Philip Roger Chris Murray who kind of kept Iowa afloat at certain parts in this game but, but these numbers are just unbelievable. Uh, Patrick McCaffrey, three points, one of nine from the three from the field, three rebounds. Tony Perkins, three points, one of six from the field. Aaron Euless, zero points, who, by the way, is a starter now. Zero point zero four from the field. Peyton went 0 for 9 from the field, zero points. DeSante Bowen, 1.04 from the field. Uh, yeah, you, you're not going to win anybody. You're not going to win any games, Gary. I don't care who you're no. playing without no. guard no. play. No, and then um, <laughs> quite honestly – it's not like the shots were rimming out. I mean, they weren't even oh. close to going out. We were, they are going off the side of the backboard. They were air balls. Um, it's as bad a shooting performance as I've seen in a long time. So uh, it, it snowballs. I don't think there's any question. It snowballed on them big time. And I think Patrick's first basket, for, you know, his first shot was in. And I don't think he made one. You know, he went 0 for 8 after that. And that's when you need somebody that's just, hey, I'm taking the ball to the hoop. I'm going to get fouled. I'm going to. I'm going to make some tough plays and they just kind of settled early and got behind. And, and other than a little bit of a burst right before the half, they really were never in it. Here's what I'm going to do folks. I'm going to throw the uh, join. uh, So you can call in. I apologize for not having that uh, in the description prior to uh, jumping on here, throw that in the live chat. And I'll also uh, for anybody who uh, is new to the show or a newcomer, I should say that's jumping on the show right now. I'll go ahead and throw that over into our description, but you may have to refresh your page. Um, the phone line is open. We've got one phone line open this evening. Uh, you're welcome to call in uh, 515-635-1601, or again, use the StreamYard link that I just dropped in the live chat. Uh, lots of, well, frankly, angry people in the chat, Gary. <laughs> so, uh, we, we won't, we'll, we'll hold off on that for a while. I do want to go through some more stats here, not to, to, uh, beat a dead horse, but uh, it is noteworthy to 
bring up the fact that they shot 20% from the field in the first half, eight of 39. They started off three for 28 uh, from the field. Have you ever seen, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have at some point, but uh, have you ever seen uh, any Big Ten team start a game three for 28? Yeah, no, I'm not sure I'm quite that bad. Uh, I, I thought they settled a, a lot for for threes. And uh, you, when their offense is good, they're getting they're getting a little bit of everything. Uh, around the basket drives, kickouts, and it's more like one or two passes and jack it up. And it's not like they, you know, weren't open. But the problem is you don't make the defense work. You don't get to the free throw line. They shot eight free throws for the entire game. And Nebraska's got a history of fouling a lot. They never they never put any pressure on them to make them foul. Um, and, you know, that's how you get out rebounded and just goes right on down the line. So, um, as we mentioned, they, they, they've got a lot of soul search and a lot of work to do because their, their next few games are not going to be easy. They, they could – they're heading a gauntlet here that uh, they're going to have to right the ship quickly or – it's going to be a tough go. About three minutes into this game, and I believe it was like eight to nine, so it was close in the first few minutes, I tweeted out, I don't like the body language early. There was something about, you know, there was one play where Rebracha missed a, a gimme and he kind of put his head down. And I, I just, again, from a non-team uh, perspective, I mean, I'm not in the locker room observing how practice is going. I expected something different when you have eight days off and you have the performance they had against Eastern Illinois last week. Um, you know, they had an opportunity to do some soul searching, Gary. You just talked about how they need to do some soul searching. If you're going to do soul searching, I would think it would be in the eight-day layoff that they just had where they went away, they went their separate ways for the holiday break. And I just felt like even those first few minutes, the body language was iffy at best. And I didn't think the defense was any better tonight, Gary. Nebraska's just not very good. No. <laughs> like, offensively, no, I mean, not very good. Was, no, was the defense Nebraska's any better tonight? No, I, would, I wouldn't say. Maybe at times, but no. Nebraska is going to be a – bottom of the league team yes um i don't i don't i don't think they'll win six or seven games i'm guessing um they're uh i mean they made some shots tonight they'll never probably never make again the rest of the season i mean they made some holy ghosters that were uh incredible so no i i, I don't think so it's um very discouraging loss because i don't think that's a very good team and they they made us look like a not a very good team either I also, one thing I tweeted out as well, and I know you'll agree with this, Gary, because you brought it up on a number of occasions. Um, and, and see if see if you agree with, with this statement uh, as I wrote it an hour ago. Iowa has a consistent issue making layups and defending layups. Is that accurate to you? Well, I think at times, definitely. Uh, and I thought tonight they, they, they definitely rushed inside, and that's why they didn't get to the free throw line. You, you got to slow down and take your time and make good, strong moves or referees for the most part are not going to bail you out. And they only shot eight free throws. I mean, that's against Nebraska. You ought to shoot 28 free throws and you watch a lot of teams will. Um, so I thought their whole, whole offensive flow was, was out of sync and, and quick shots, quick shots inside. Couldn't get to the free throw line. Wasn't very physical this is a soft team right now. I think, I think everybody is looking at it. This is a soft team. And the word gets out that you're like that. That's something that's, uh, you know, that, that's, what's going to go around. Hey, beat them up, be physical, beat them up. And, and uh, you got a chance to beat them. And that's something they're going to have to correct quickly. Let's get to our first caller. Thank you for calling <laughs> the storm. Who's on the line. Hello, you're on the air. Holy I don't know where you're at, so we'll, we'll go to our next caller. Thank you for calling Iowa Post Game with Coach Gary Close, who's on the line. Hey, Corey. Hey, Coach Close. It's Darrell MVP. How you doing, sir? Well, I'm doing probably about the same as your guys are doing in terms of basketball performance. On the gridiron, the two teams will pro- settle it out in just a few days. But, oh, Lordy, where, where do we start, Corey? I mean, I didn't see most of the game, but – I turned it on. It was fifty-eight thirty-eight, and then I looked and it was just it just a case of where Iowa couldn't make shots. Where was it a lack of effort? 
like what, said, what sparked a, that big run? That's a good question for you, Gary. Is there lack of effort right now? I mean, I think there's lack of effort on defense at times. I don't, I don't care what anybody has to say. I think there's lack of effort on defense. Is that accurate? I, I'd say so. There's a lack of uh, urgency. Uh, you know, there's a. I mean, the announcers even said it. The loose balls went to Nebraska. They, they just they they were slow to get to the floor. Uh, they were slow getting back on defense. They gave up a lot of transition baskets. Um, they were slow rotating when people got beat. They were just slow, um, and they're not that slow. So I, I think um, they weren't sharp, and um, and right now they're just they're just not playing very well. So that's that's just what it is. And they've got to they've got to turn around quickly because, the, like we said, the schedule is brutal, um, and uh, they're gonna, they're going to do it real quick. Yeah, they've had a lot of time off here, Gary. So, I mean, they had they had a stretch where they were playing a lot of games, and then they get you know they get to three games in a week, which I thought they played pretty well during that stretch. I know they went one and two, but they very easily could have yeah. beaten Wisconsin. I know it's hindsight's twenty twenty, but and I know there was a game in between, which it makes you wonder even more. They beat Semo pretty handily, but is there any weird possibility that that Wisconsin loss, how they lost that game, you know, just kind of eight at them or I don't know how to describe that, but it was a, a, a heartbreaking loss Corey, in, can in I, some fashion. Can I summarize what I think you're trying to say? Sure. I think you're trying to say, is this more of a mental thing than a physical thing? I, I don't, I just don't know how, is a that whole true, te- Corey? I, I don't know how a whole team goes from playing how they were playing against Iowa state and Wisconsin a week and a half ago to losing to Eastern Illinois and getting blown out at Nebraska, Gary, that doesn't that tell you there's a, a huge mental aspect to this? Uh, probably. Um, but I, I, you know, I, they're not playing well, I, whether, you know, a mental physical, they're, they're, they're just not playing very well. They're not playing with a sense of urgency. They're not playing hard. Um, they're not playing like they typically usually play. And that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, it's puzzling. i be honest with you. I think, um, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, their margin of error is not great. And this team needed time to gel. And I think losing Murray and then losing McCaffrey, it's, you know, taking time away from the team has not helped. And it almost looks like they're back at the beginning of the year trying to get things going again. And so, and unfortunately they're in the big 10 season as I know any time, but um, they probably needed a day off or so. And then they needed about four or five hard days of work rather than a Christmas break, but that's, you know, that's just the way it is. So, so to have that break and then jump right back in with a big 10 game on the road is, is not easy, but um, you know, they got to play better than that. Yeah. I, I understand they were playing the big 10 team on the road, but I mean, it, it wasn't like they're playing Purdue or Wisconsin here. I mean, Nebraska was what seven and six entering this game. Well, they could have I easily. Mean, if this is one of the games. They could have wants to in, Drill MVP, that's let me interrupt you here. They, they could have easily early. I mean, they were shooting, what, 10% at one point, Gary, or maybe worse than that. Well, they were nine minutes without scoring. I mean, that's that's hard to do. They, they could have easily been down 25 or more, and they actually had a chance there. I mean, they were late in the first half. They cut it to single digits, and you're thinking, okay, you can get going here. But yeah. what's incredible to me, Gary, is uh, uh, they were, you know, Robbie Hummel was talking about it throughout the, the broadcast you don't ever think about Iowa really struggling offensively. And, and sure, there's going to be games where you're scoring in the 60s or 70s. But to go in the first half and shoot 20.5% and you think, okay, the light's going to come on in that second half. And they come back in the second half and shoot 32%. Um, I, I just don't know how you explain that. Um, I know you're saying they just didn't play well, but I, there has to be – I know maybe as a fan I want an explanation there isn't one, but <laughs> – well, I, just, I think the first thing is you got to question how good a shooting team they are. I mean, they're they're not as bad as what they're what they're showing, but um, you know this is this is being this is repeating itself. And so you know every once in a while you have a bad night. That's one thing, but when it keeps happening, then you've got to question really how how good a shooting team is. So there, then you've got to get some inside baskets. You got to get to the free throw line. You got to make the defense play. I thought they settled especially early uh, with a lot of threes. They weren't even close to going in, um, and got then they got themselves in a hole. and And uh, this team is is not built uh, to get in holes and then try to come back and, and make great kinds. It's it, they're, they're they can't score quickly for the most part, um, you know, unless they're playing an inferior team. 
which they're not going to play from here on out. So um, very few easy baskets, very few transition baskets. Didn't get to the free throw line. Uh, you know, it was just a total breakdown. And then uh, as far as everybody's wondering, as far as turnovers, Iowa actually won the turnover battle, surprisingly. Just six <laughs> turnovers tonight. So I guess I don't know if that's a step in the right direction on that front, Gary, because they have been turning the ball over at a really high rate, even going back to Iowa State and Wisconsin. But, I mean, when you're down 20 throughout, um, again, this game, ba- based on all the criteria, uh, you have a different opponent here and you're on the road and maybe a better crowd. Not that the crowd was bad in Lincoln or Pinnacle Bank Arena, but, you again, this could have even easily been a 30-point game um, in that first half. Uh, do you anything else from you, Darrell MVP? Uh, yeah, I've got two things. Uh, first, I, I, want, I know you're probably wondering about C.J. Frederick. I'm not a doctor or anything, but it looked like he uh, dislocated his finger against Missouri. So, and he didn't return for the rest of the game after that. So that's not good for Kentucky. Uh, Let me ask you this. Iowa currently, do you think they end up in the NIT, the NCAA tournament, or not in any tournament at all? I have no idea. I know everybody (laughs) on here is saying that they're lucky to even make the NIT. We're two conference games in, Gary. Um, do I yeah. feel optimistic about this? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Not right now. Uh, I, I was hoping that last week was just a fluke. But when you see a second straight game like this uh, eight days later, it, it for me, it, it sends up a big red flag. But it's really early to real MVP. But like Gary said, I mean, you, you, you've you used up your breaks. It's game, 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 game here. So we're going to find out real fast. If this team's 0-5, 0-6, we're going to know the answer to that question because they're not rattling off 12 straight yeah. conference wins. Um, so that Well, I think the indicator will be when they get this whole team together for you know, extended period of time with practice, with games, th- then, then we're going to find out. Uh, they really have not had that. And that's that's the only thing I'm hanging on right now. Is, you know, Murray, This is Murray's first game back. Connor was out. Uh, they've been out for a while. They had a long break. There's a lot of things there that can cause something like that to happen in addition to not playing well. And so they need some practice time. Uh, they need to get back to where they were playing before. And um, so until I see that, until I, I got to wait a couple weeks and then, then I'll have a better idea of, of where they're at in terms of how they're playing. I think, I think it's, I think it's too early. Well, coach Coast, you're, you sound like exactly where I'm as a Kentucky fan, just holding on to hope. Well, that's yeah. all we got. <laughs> struggle together. Let, let me just say one thing. Let me say one thing. I haven't watched more than five minutes of Kentucky basketball this year, but boy, both parties, and I'm talking about Iowa and CJ Frederick, probably wish that whole thing went down a different way. Because this team, this team could use a guy like CJ Frederick right now, a guy who can make threes. Um, you mentioned the guard court, Gary, and he's not. I mean, I, I can't imagine he's real happy at Kentucky right now. But that's the well, reality he's injured of the right now, role. Corey. Well, I know he's injured right now, but when he was healthy, he wasn't. I don't believe he was when well, he got benched. So he obviously wasn't playing that well, and the team's not playing that well. So I'm just saying, I think ideally, both parties would probably admit, if you put a gun to their head, that we wish that we had things the way they were before. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody has particularly came out better on the other side in any circle, either party, Kentucky basketball, C.J. Frederick, or Iowa basketball. So, yep. All right, Drew, it's MVP. a tough situation. Yeah, right. hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks, Coach Close, for doing this every yep. game. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I think one thing you got to realize, you, you've we've talked about what they've gone through, and then you throw in, I know it sounds like an excuse, you, you lose the – fourth player taking the NBA draft. I mean, that's a big loss. And then you say, well, Chris is just going to be plugged in there for Keegan. Well, it doesn't work that way. I mean, it's got to happen. And then losing Bohannon, I mean, he's a, he's a threat out there. And and he's, and he's so they, they you go from being kind of a role player to all of a sudden now you're, you're the player. And that's a big jump. And right so far, guys like Perkins and Euless, and Sanford haven't been able to take that next step, but it's it's early, and um, they showed flashes. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's going to happen. But it's you know, it's got to happen here pretty quickly. I was going to say what you said is you're right. It's early, but what you said earlier in the show, Gary, is exactly right. It's got to be a sense of urgency. So mm-hmm. <laughs> then it yeah. just didn't seem like there was tonight. So uh, no, I agree. 
The Hawkeyes, again, uh, losing tonight in Lincoln, 66-50. to want to take a moment to thank Brad Van Meter and his team down at State Farm. They've got three fully licensed team members helping you navigate through the complex world that is insurance. And, of course, the company of State Farm is celebrating their 100th year of being in business. Give Brad and his team a call at 515-256-6480 or online at uh, www.bradvanmeter.com. Also want to take a moment to tell everybody about our uh, social media. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do that. We've also got a new Instagram page. A lot of work has been put into the Instagram page. So uh, thank you to those that have, that have helped behind the scenes on that. Uh, follow both from the Hawkeye. So search from the Hawkeye on Twitter, from the Hawkeye on Instagram, and of course, from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Facebook. Lots of activity on that Instagram page. So be sure to give it a follow. Even if you're not real active on Instagram, it does help. All right, let's get to our next caller. Ryan, Mr. Ryan, where are you at, Ryan? Are you there? Oh, you are out of the page. There you go, sir. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Just wonderful. So happy to get my CJ Frederick weekly update. Anyway. (laughs) Calm down, Ryan. (laughs) Then you can watch Xavier with uh, Jack (laughs) Nungy. Yeah, boy. There's there's two. Listen, those are two that that got away. And I know Jack Nungy's normally blaming Jack Nungy for going, but boy, he wouldn't imagine those two on this team. We said the same thing last year, Gary, but imagine those two on the, this team could use both of those guys in a desperate, desperate way. Well, we're going to need to pony up lots and lots of nil money to get a big man when we lose Philip next year, because uh, I just, I don't, I, I don't have a whole lot of hope for next year. Now, as far as this year goes, uh, I kind of thought that, the team would kind of go the way Sanford would go. He looked promising last year. He was an instant starter this year, had some good games, and then fell off a cliff, came back and had a couple real good games. And today he's back to a complete and utter liability, 0 for 9 from the field. He wasn't the only one. Patrick, I think, was 1 for 6. Um, Or, no, he was like 1 for 9 and, yeah, he was one for nine. Perkins was one for six. Uh, you can't win this way. You know, I know Nebraska wears red, but they're not Wisconsin. And I don't, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I'm worried about the future. You know, if Chris thinks he's getting drafted, maybe he is. You know, Johnny Davis got drafted and was in the G League all this year, as far as I know. Uh, I don't think he's ready. I think he will be ready at some point, but he's not a lot for sure to come back. Well, let's remember, let's just remember uh, not to defend Chris Murray, but you know, Chris Murray did go out and despite the team's performance, I mean, it's 17 and eight and it was his first game back after a pretty long absence. I'm not ripping Chris Murray at all. He he first game back in what, four or five games, you know, he looked okay. It was the rest of the team that really stunk around him as far as I'm concerned. Plus an extended break. You got those games off plus the extended break. I mean, you're going to beat off some rust there, but I understand where you're coming from. And I, I, I wanted to ask coach closest after the Wisconsin game, but I, I'm really doing my best not to come off as a wise guy. So please don't take it that way. (laughs) But like, you know, you look at the fouls, the two fouls on Connor today, you look at, what Philip got teed for. I mean, so what he said something. I mean, I doubt it was that bad. Maybe no, that's an automatic tee though, Gary. That, uh, well, I but you do. know what? It's not, not if it's a Michigan state or Wisconsin or Purdue or one of the more upper echelon teams. It just isn't. As soon as I, I mean, heard do you think, else. do you think Bo Ryan, do you think Bo Ryan and Tom Izzo are asking the referees how their Christmas break went? I mean, they're calling them every name in the book. It's yeah, well, they're calling them names. But when you get into a play, when we're talking about the college game, and a player is yelling at the at an official, uh, even if it's you know, so he foul said foul. And so he said foul. Big deal. It's not like he used the f word. You know, I mean, I just it just doesn't seem like we get a heck of a lot of breaks. You know, um, I I I think there's probably some officials that can't wait to call a T on Fran. I mean, Gary, can you chime, chime in on this, Gary? But I do feel, and I'm sorry, Gary, but well, I do feel I, like Wisconsin gets, and Michigan State and some of these other programs do get a little more rope than what lowly Iowa gets. Well, Gary, what do you think on this? 
Yeah, that's that's a that's a I, I don't know if I have a good answer to that. I think that I think the I think what you got to do is you got to you got to worry about what you can control. And uh, these last two games, the officials had nothing to do with how poorly you played. And so it's almost like you're wasting your time worrying about the officiating when you're playing so poorly. Um, there is an art to work in officials. There, there's no question about it. And um, some are better than others at doing it. Uh, I think in Phillips' case, uh, my guess is they probably told him to cool it a little bit earlier. And then he shows up the official and boom, he gets, he gets teed up, uh, which, you know, uh, he got, he got the, totally hacked there though. He might've, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to get, you know, you're going to, they're, they're going to miss some calls. Uh, that's just, that's just the way it is. But you see, that's the same thing. He should be more worried about rebounding the ball, playing defense, running the court, getting on the floor for loose balls than officiating uh, because that's just, that, that's not, that's something he can't control and it's not going to help him play any better. And for the record, I mean, we lost because we, we shot 26% from the field, which is just beyond horrendous. Um, just a depressing. Yeah, and got outworked. I got outworked. I mean, outworked out everything. Yeah, this yeah, team so doesn't have an identity or a pulse right now. And, you know, you can say all you want, well, Chris and Connor are out for Eastern Illinois. Oh, my God. I mean, I remember, and Corey, you might remember, that Kettle Riverside game. The difference in that game was – I remember. I was there. <laughs> I know you were. I know you were. At Riverside – I saw just, it right in the front row. <laughs> they, they shot like 65% from three. There was nothing you could do about it. It was one of those games where you just shrug your shoulders and say they just shot the lights out and probably never will that well ever again. You know, but losing to Eastern just demoralized me. Um, and it's getting harder and harder to get excited for the season. I'm going to keep trying, but boy. Well, I'm like I worried. said, like I said, until I see the team together for an extended period of time with no huge breaks, uh, I know I'm making excuses, but. Chris has been out a while. They had finals before that game. They, they still should have won a game. They had a big break before this game. Connor's out. They, they just have not – the team's not that good that they can't have – they need practice, they need to play. And so I think we'll know a lot more in about two weeks. And hopefully uh, there's enough character in that locker room that it's going to come forward and we'll see it over the course of the next few days or it's going to be a long year. Yeah, and hopefully we start knocking off a couple of opponents that we shouldn't beat to sum sure. it off. So they're going to have to. They're going to have. If you if you want to climb back into the tournament discussion, they're going to have to beat teams they weren't expected to beat. Ryan, so uh, Ryan, oh, I appreciate absolutely. You Will you be calling after the uh, Music City Bowl with Coach Patterson? I'm going to sure try. Sounds good, sir. Well, hopefully, hopefully we'll it all goes well. Thank you, guys. Talk, appreciate it. Thanks, all right. Happy New Year. All right. Well, um, we've got uh, a couple people here waiting on hold. And uh, I'm, again, I'm a little bit behind in the chat, so I appreciate everybody being patient here. Um, I do agree. There were some comments earlier about uh, Sanford, and I hate to pick on the kid. But, boy, it, it, that Southeast Missouri game, we got on this postgame show, Gary, and said, hey, it looks like maybe he had a coming out party. He's going to get some confidence. He's went right back to not being able to, you know, uh, make anything. Um, his shot selection is bad. Uh, he takes a lot of tough contested shots that, uh, are hard to make. I mean, I, I, you know, and I, it's a real fine line cause they don't want him to be hesitant. They want to give him a green light, but his shot selection is bad. Uh, I, I really think he's a better shooter. If he took better shots, all those shots inside the arc were tough shots with the exception of a couple. They were, they were under duress and uh, quick, and uh, I feel for the kid because he's better than what he's shown. But boy, he, he is really spinning his wheels, and and uh, we need him. I mean, he, he's got to play better. He's along with a lot of other players, but he is really, really struggling. And uh, hopefully, he can pull out of it. And I'll say this too: maybe you don't agree with this, but if you're going to give eight uh, Josh Dix eighteen minutes, you need to get him more than one three point try. I mean, he, I don't know why yeah. he's out there if he's not out there to shoot threes, Gary. Um, 
18 well, when you're running when you're running the motion and the passing game, it's and there's no real set plays to set somebody up for a three point shot. Then 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 it comes down to you know getting open without the ball, coming off of screens. And he's young; he he doesn't know how to do that very well right now. Um, he'll get better at it, but um, and I think that's part of the reason why the offense is bogging down is it just it just hasn't had a lot of time to get in sync with everybody out and with the break and. I think that'll get better with with more practice, but that's about as disjointed as I, I've ever seen them on the offensive end. And and uh, the result is that they're not getting very many easy shots, and um, they're not getting very many second shots, and they're not getting to the free throw line. And then you throw in not shooting well, and that's how you score fifty points. Is it fair to say if you're struggling offensively, especially from behind the arc and with your three point shooters, is it fair to say maybe? Um, maybe run more set plays? Is that less motion? Well, possibly. Um, but I think the other thing is you got to touch the post. Uh, I thought the double teaming of Phillip tonight caused some problems. I, I, did, I didn't – I don't know if that was a surprise or uh, they just didn't react to it too well. I thought that kind of bogged us down as well. But the best threes you can get are off of penetration, either dumping into the post and kicking it back out. How many times do you see an offense rebound where a guy kicks it out and a guy makes a three? Those are the best threes. Passing the ball around a perimeter and shooting threes or flying off of screens and shooting threes are lower percentage three-point shots. And we're not getting very many penetrate, kick it out, dump into the post, kick it out, threes, you know, in, out, over. Um, not all of them, uh, but but some of them. Um, and I think they I think they've got to get more more penetration uh, to get the free throw line and get better better shots. Well, we've got uh, again uh, Kyle who's up next. We've got Tony on hold. We've got the caller uh, on our phone line. We're going to be right back. Take a quick break. We'll be right back with more here in Iowa post game with Coach Gary Close. The Hawkeyes falling on the road at Nebraska. We'll be back with more after this. Hawkeye fans, let's talk about health and performance optimization for a moment. Our sponsor, Ascent Nutrition, offers amazing products. It's actually owned by former Iowa graduate Lance Shuttler. Now, I've decided to partner with Ascent Nutrition because of their unique approach to human health. Ascent offers an organically grown mold and mycotoxin-free coffee. It provides a pure, clean, and rich flavor without those pesticides that most coffees are treated with. They also offer an algae oil DHA, which is used to support brain health, memory and focus, as well as proper nervous system development in adults, children, athletes, and even pets. Now, lastly, their unique crafted wild pine pollen is used to support cardiovascular health, hormonal function, and a healthy libido. Your purchase not only supports this channel, but the business of a former Hawkeye. Visit GoAscentNutrition.com or click the link in the description below and use the code Hawkeyes. That's the code Hawkeyes to receive 15% off your total order from Ascent Nutrition. So appreciate Ascent Nutrition as always here on the channel. And, uh, I think I, need a little, I think I need a little bit of that Ascent Nutrition. <laughs> I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think the players need some of that coffee is what they need. Yeah. <laughs> game. Mr. Kyle is here. Kyle, how are you, sir? Um, I think the less said, the better. <laughs> These last two games, I, th those are the two worst games I've ever seen Iowa basketball play back-to-back. -back. I'm sorry. Well, just for the record, uh, you know, last week I was doing a live college football signing day show during the Eastern Illinois game. Gary, you want to know pain. Uh, I went back and watched that Eastern Illinois game yesterday. So I've had back to back days of this. Um, so <laughs> that wasn't a good idea. Hey, well, I, one I mean, thing we can say is, <laughs> Corey, knowing the outcome of that game before you hit play, you are committed to your job, sir. I would. That's, that's, <laughs> I appreciate looking at the positive. We're stupid. <laughs> yeah, we're stupid. Yeah. Maybe both. Maybe a little both. Maybe yeah. a little. Well, um, I mean, I think tonight was a was a whole bunch of things. I think, honestly, the entire game, the thing that just screamed out to me is this team is just not an aggressive basketball team. Um, they don't pass with authority. They don't cut with authority. They don't screen with authority. They don't drive with authority. I mean, it feels like their struggles around the rim to me, it looks like half of their struggle around the rim is two-thirds of their shots when they take a shot around the rim 
they're fading away. They're, they don't drive towards the basket and shoot layups going towards the basket, which they, I mean, they had eight free throw attempts tonight and their, their shot was off. And I would figure on a night when they shot 25% from three, you would get 15, 20 free throw attempts. Cause the guys would just say, Hey, I, my shot's not going in tonight. I'm going to put my head down and go to the basket and I'm either going to get hacked or go up strong. No, I agree. I think that's a real good point. Uh, I mean, how many times you see them come to a strong stop, shot fake, and take it right up through somebody's nose? It didn't happen. There were a lot of fadeaways, a lot of flippers, a lot of quick shots. And refs will not bail you out with those. Even if you get fouled, a lot of times they say, hey, that's too weak. I'm not calling that. And uh, with, other than Phillip, we really don't have anybody uh, that takes the ball in there with authority and gets to the free throw line. And we've got to develop that because you're going to have nights where you're not making threes and you've got to have something to counter that. And, and um, tonight we did not have that. Well, let me yeah. tell you something that's, that's changed drastically from three weeks ago, Gary. And, and you know this. Um, I think a big part of the issues in these past two games have been the complete uh, disappearance, disappearing act of Tony Perkins. You go back mm-hmm. and, and watch the Seton Hall game, for instance. I remember having this discussion with you on this show. I remember saying, Gary, have you ever seen a guard that seeks contact as much as Tony Perkins does? Where, where is Tony Perkins? Yeah, no, he's vanished the last couple of games. No, there's, there's no doubt. Um, but again, I go back to the original, one of my original thoughts. When you go from a role player to being the player or one of the players, so to speak, it's a different deal. And, um, you know, at times he has shown – uh, that, you know, he's played well, but it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Uh, the good news is we have seen him play well, uh, certainly a lot better than he's played the last two games. He's got to get back to that level for us to have any chance and hopefully he will, but it's, um, it's not a given. It's going to take hard work and, and uh, getting after it. Yeah. I mean, and I defensively too, like he, like the Nebraska players, whether or not they're talented, they got up in our faces tonight. Like that Nebraska is not a team like I, and I, I hadn't watched any of them this year before we went and played them, but like, they look completely different in terms of just energy on defense. Like they just look like they want to play defense now, which is something that they didn't show me last year. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think they're, they, they look to be a little more physical, a little bit more aggressive. I, that's the first time I've seen them play all year. And I know they took Purdue to overtime and um, you know, that that's, that's impressive in itself. Uh, so maybe they're better than what I give them credit for. I, I, I'm going to wait and see through the whole gauntlet of the Big Ten before I can decide that. But they're definitely better. There's no there's no question they're better, especially on the defensive end. Uh, but even they had stretches where they couldn't score, and because Iowa couldn't score, it was you know there was nothing nothing there to build on. So um, I still think Nebraska will be in the bottom quarter of the league i'd be surprised if they're not but hey um they're one-on-one so uh, right now they're not you want to know what a depressing stat is how about rebound <clears throat> it's this team and by the way their best rebounder their best player walker was out a lot of this game with foul trouble and they dominated iowa on the glass 54 to 40 i mean that's just domination gary and uh, even the rebounds that iowa did secure i made the comment during the game it just seems like every rebound was a struggle um, and, and frankly, I, you know, when you're not making shots, I mean, this is what I was taught. I never played college basketball. I'll admit that. But what I was taught from a young age playing hoops is if you're not making shots, you contribute on defense and by rebounding and by hustle. Right. And I, I again, I'm not trying to rip anybody specifically, but you know, you got Patrick McCaffrey, six, nine, Patrick McCaffrey, three points, one and nine from the field, three rebounds. I, I feel like we should be able to count on Patrick for more than three boards. And he consistently yeah. puts out rebounding numbers, like three, three rebounds a game. I mean, once in a while, soft, have a, yeah, I, I don't understand that, Gary. Um, and again, it's not just him. I understand that, but he's an example. You have Philip Rebracha who's battling down low, and consistently, even when he has off nights, he's getting 13 boards a game. And because Philip is by far our most physical player. Yeah, uh, the drop off from Philip to the rest of the guys in terms of physicality, and you know, Connor's physical, but he's what six foot four. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can only do so much. But, uh, the other. The other rebounding type players are not physical players, and, and Nebraska was much more physical tonight. I, I don't think there's any doubt. And as I mentioned before, that will get out, and so they're going to have to address that 
individually as well as a team. They've got to become a lot more physical or um, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough year. No, no doubt. And we had three guys too. Um, I mean, I, the people shoot badly. I get it. But like three guys that played big minutes last year, Patrick, Tony and, and Peyton that went two for 24 tonight. And I like, I, I don't know what they're combined They're I don't think they got more than five rebounds combined either. I mean, they, those are the guys like whether uh, like DeSante Bowen plays well or Josh Dix or any of those guys, like if they have off nights, they're freshmen. Like that kind of is what it is that happens, especially on the road in the big 10, but three guys that play huge minutes last year shooting. I don't know. I don't even know what that is, but. Well, frankly, this is my belief right now. And I, I'm not saying you just give up on guys <laughs> like you. Absolutely not. No. But I do think it may be time to start playing DeSante a little bit more. Um, because if a guard court is suffering and he's a freshman, he's going to have some growing pains. Trial by fire, Gary. I mean, that young man, he's a four-star recruit out of high school. He's shown flashes. Um, you know, Euless over dribbles constantly, constantly dribbling into into defense. You know, he he gets overly aggressive on on de- on the defensive end and fouls. Uh, I, I think maybe time to set Josh Dix and Asante Bowen loose a bit. I, I was going to say, I would love to see Josh Dix get more and not like – Tonight he got 18 minutes, um, which I was happy that it looked like he finally got some of Sanford's minutes, which I think is what should happen until Peyton starts to play better. But like, it's not enough for Fran to just put him on the court. Like you got to put him on the court and run plays for him. Cause like you guys said before, he's not going to go create his own shot. Like he's got to be running off screens. He's got to be, he's got to be doing things that get him shots. It's, I mean, it can't just be yeah. him depending on him to go get it. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. I think you know with, with Tony, you got to believe he's going to come back. He, he's he's played too much good basketball for for him not to not to stay with. Uh, Ulus is a, is a big question right now. He's not playing very well, and um, you know everybody got a shot tonight. It wasn't uh, maybe some deserved a little bit more, but it wasn't like anybody came off the bench and went whoa. I mean, it's just it was a total you know a total uh, off night. So hopefully. Um, Hopefully that's going to change. Do you see any uh, adjustments on defense tonight either, Coach? Because I didn't really – I don't know. I didn't – offensively offensively or defensively, I don't think they really changed a whole lot from the start to the finish of the game. Yeah, I guess probably not. I, I think, you know, I think their defense probably was good enough to win uh, or at least make it a game. It wasn't great. Um, uh, I don't know what Nebraska ended up shooting. I know they shot pretty well in the first half, but Nebraska made some shots. I guarantee you they will not make. I mean, they're banking in threes. They're throwing in jump hooks from 10 feet. I mean, it was, it was their night, and th- that won't happen. I can almost guarantee that's not going to happen again. So there were, it was a little a little skewed as far as that goes. But offensively, we were so bad, and we couldn't get to the free throw line. I mean, you know, we talk about – you know, uh, you know, bad defense putting pressure on your offense. Well, this was the other way around. I mean, our offense was so bad that I don't know how good. You know, we we almost had to shut them out to win the game. We were just we were that bad offensively. So it looked like we put the defense, football offense the out there today. Was, yeah, I thought the defense was decent. Um, yeah. I think they lost the game on the offensive end and rebounding and, and being and just being out out physical. De- decent, decent. The, the, the defense was decent against a bad offensive team. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, giving up six and six against Nebraska's no, no crazy feat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else, Kyle? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just I'm hopeful that they, they can turn it around. Um, Penn State is no joke. I don't know how much you've watched them, Corey. I they're because tough. I have my my friends. When you talk about line. physical, they're going to be physical. They and their offense. If <clears throat> if we don't show up and play defense, they will score ninety on us. I can promise you that. Yeah, that's not going to be an easy game. The little I've seen at Penn State, I've been impressed. I think they're better. Yeah, and I, I was at really well Brad Underwood. Of course, they got they killed Illinois. They killed um, them. And Underwood said after that game that they're like one of the maybe the, the most experienced teams in the one of the oldest teams in the country. So uh, yeah. yeah, they're experienced. They're tough. Uh, they're physical. They make threes. Uh, maybe the exact team that uh, is for us to play. I mean, it's going to be. Uh, the line is drawn in the sand, so to speak, and they they, they got they got to make a stand. So, yeah, I mean, I think the only a tough physical team we'll find out. The, yeah, the only the only way to kind of get your way out of these kind of the kind of mess that we find ourselves in now, I figure, would be to either play a team that we beat down and feel better about ourselves, or a team that 
has the potential to just kick us in the teeth again and keep reminding us, you know, why we're in the situation we're in. I don't think playing a middle of the pack team or, well, I guess Penn State's middle of the pack, but playing a style that gets a close game is going to get us out of this because we either need to dominate or be dominated again. I agree. I appreciate the Kyle, uh, the Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate the uh, call, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank See you, Kyle. All right. Uh, Want to give another shout out to our sponsor here. You see him upper upper right hand corner, Iowa Floor Covering, sponsoring the show this evening. And also, get rid of the comment here from uh, Kells Bells, and we'll get rid of the uh, score as well. Brad Van Meter and his team down at State <laughs> Farm. Of course, you can call Brad and his team for a quote on auto, home, renters, business, life insurance. And of course, they're part of the largest auto insurance company in the country. They spend countless hours taking care of their customers from border to border here in the state of Iowa. Again, call them at 515-256-6480. Thank you to Brad Van Meter and his team down in Des Moines at State Farm. Let's move on to Tony. Tony, how are you, sir? Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you good loud man. and clear, and you're, you're, uh, I'm glad you're good despite the, the performance or the lack thereof on the court tonight. Well, this is a show about the women's team, right? <laughs> the women, boy, I look. I looked up here for the record. It, I mean, I've got it on another TV here. It was, uh, I think, it was like thirty-five to no, it was like yeah. 25, 20, something like that. And all of a sudden, I look yeah. up and it's forty-four to twenty. So the women, yeah, they just, they just exploded. A very good. By the way, that that uh, guard they signed from Wisconsin is a player. She is really, really. I was going to ask you she's about a, her, Gary. She's, she's the same age as my daughter, so I saw her a lot in AU. And uh, she's very, very talented. She's She's got a chance to be really good. And, of course, you're talking about Taylor Strimlow, and mm -hmm. she's considered a four-star prospect. Um, had a lot of Big Ten offers um, and seems to be the real deal. She's got a little – I even said on my uh, reaction video to her committing, she's got a little bit of Caitlin in her. I'm not saying she's Caitlin Clark, yeah. but a little bit of how she plays. She's got some nifty moves and uh, really good drive into the basket. Seems to finish well around the rim. So uh, Yeah, no, she's good. She she leads the team in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good team. They're ranked like third or fourth in the state. So, um, yeah, she's she she's a good get for uh, Lisa. Um, how was the pot roast, Corey? It was very good. <laughs> like I can say it was the only – I tweeted that out during the game, Gary. I said this pot roast I'm eating is the only good thing about tonight. It was very good <laughs> pot roast. Very – you know when it just just melts in your mouth, Gary, and you get the carrots yeah. and you get the celery. Yeah. And the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Melts in your mouth, uh, Tony. So it was very, very good. Good. Um, a couple of things I had. Um, with the Phillip technical, that was very obvious to me. And the reason is, is Phillip looked the referee right in the eye. Like if he may have said something, it wasn't like he made it a point to make direct eye contact with the referee. He showed him that. Up. Yeah, he showed him. That, 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 that's what it is. If you do that, you get a T. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's just something I wanted to make a point of is like if he says it and he's like looking down or whatever, and he's not like trying to make it obvious to everyone looking down on the game, then he may not have got the T, but he made it very and the obvious. He's got to control the game. And so that's you know, it's understandable because if he doesn't give him a T, then yeah. somebody else is going to do the exact same thing. And then it gets all out of hand and you got to nip it in the bud. Um, a question I had for you, Coach Close, is like when um, seasons are on the brink like this, what, how do players handle, uh, I don't know, they call them players-only meetings or whatever. You know what I mean? You hear that scuttle button in the media, you know, like, oh, they had a players-only meeting and they got pissed and, you know, ripped the paint off the wall or however you want to say it. How, how does that get handled? Is that something with the coaches? Is that the players doing something like that? And does that need to happen with this team right now? Well, it may already have, or maybe will. I think that's, uh, you know, that's when you go through situations like this, this is where you need good leadership. Usually comes from your, you know, your upperclassmen, and um, and so that'll be interesting to see um, because they they need it badly, um, and I, I think they do have some leaders on this team. So I, I would be surprised if they don't rebound at least with, with better effort and better intensity. I, I'll be really surprised if that doesn't happen. Will it be good enough to win? I don't know, because you still got to put the ball in the basket and you still got to stop people from scoring. But um, I think this game was an anomaly in terms of getting outworked and being physically 
manhandled in parts of that game that doesn't normally happen to Iowa teams. So I think that'll change. It's got to change uh, because if not, then it's going to be a long year. And that's where your that's where your leaders have got to step up and say, "Hey, look, we we got to make a stand here." And it's got to start in practice. And, you know, you got to have physical practices, and it's got to lead right up to the game. And I would guess these next few weeks, you're going to see a lot of a lot of physical practices, maybe a few fights breaking out, stuff like that, because I'm, I'm sure it's a, a disgruntled um, team on edge for sure. And do you worry about uh, frustration? Because, I mean, frustration has to boil over at some point, you know, because you could see it with some of the players just being frustrated with shots not falling or a bounce going one way or the other. Or like you said, you know, that a uh, big guy like hitting a 10 foot turnaround jump hook and banking a three at the corner. And it's just like, Oh, here we go. Why? Uh, you know, like, and just frustration has got to build up at some point. Like how, no how do you handle it? How do you handle that as a coach? I guess. Well, you try to control the things you can control, you know, that's effort. That's preparation. That's intensity. Uh, that's paying attention to the scouting report. Um, that's how working people, um, all those things they fell short on, and I think tonight, in addition to not executing very well, so it was kind of a total collapse, so to speak. That's very uncommon uh, with this team. So that's why I'm hoping that's you know that's that's going to be it. This is this is the bottom, and they're going to fight their way out of it. Um, but that remains to be seen. Now, someone um, mentioned something in the chat. I think it was about like you know we're kind of surprised. Fran being a Philly guy, you know, that that's toughness. Were, did, did you grow up around the same time as he did in Philly? Uh, yeah, I did. I, I grew up in Southern New Jersey, which, you know, right across the river from Philadelphia. We're a lot, a lot tougher over there than the guys from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most people wouldn't believe that, but at any rate, uh, Fran was a terrific high school player, um, and a very good college player as well. Um, uh, he his uh, his uh, both his high school and collegiate career were were very impressive. Uh, the the thing I will end on is that we do end the season, unfortunately, with Nebraska at Carver. Hopefully, we can show a different level of toughness. Otherwise, I don't know. This could be a very long winter. Well, time but will I, tell. Yeah, and I'm with you, Coach. I, I I do think we need some time to gel. I mean. I, I'm still holding out hope. I'm I'm always the optimist. I'm still holding out hope. I I think they'll turn it around. I, I really do. But uh, hopefully, this is the kick and the whatever you want to say that they need. And uh, I'll leave it at that. I guess. Yeah. Well, Tony, pr appreciate you, you good. Us always, sir. And uh, hopefully, better times ahead. Yeah, we'll see you uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, thanks, Gordon. Right. Full weekend. Thank you, sir. Wait, uh, a lot of negative people in the chat. Uh, fire Fran. Fran is the worst coach in the Big Ten. Je Jesse says, play Bowen and Dix. This year is a lost cause. Wow. Uh, I I'm not going that far. I I, I don't know about you, Gary. No, I, I don't no, no, agree with any of that. Uh, and, and the comment here in the chat here that uh, um, CJ says, uh, it's really not that early, 13 games down with 18 to go. Well, they're two games into a 20-game conference schedule. Well, and I, you know, and my my point being is they, they haven't had their team together uh, for an extended period of time, at least not of late. I mean, it's probably been a month since they, they've had everybody there practicing and playing and their margin of error is not great. I mean, they need everybody and uh, they need everybody on the floor practicing, getting better, learning how to play with one another. And until they go through that, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to give up uh, now in two or three weeks if they're playing like this. After that extended period of time, then then maybe uh, then maybe doesn't look as good. But um, uh, you know, this was Chris's first game back in nearly probably nearly a month, and Connor was out, and and um, so and then they've had these big breaks with uh, final exam and then Christmas. Or they've I, I can guarantee you they've had maybe two practices in the last two weeks, maybe three, and that's just you don't get better not practicing. So especially this team, so. Um, when, when they get a chance to play some games, get some practices in, get a lot of repetition, then I think we'll have a better idea of, of uh, the type of team they are because they've shown flashes of playing really well and they played like tonight. So 
uh, there's a lot of question marks out there. Brandon says current records eight and five. Next five at Penn State, Indiana, at Rutgers, Michigan, Maryland, can Iowa stay above 500 in this stretch? Uh, in other words, they've got. I mean, they're they're three games above 500 now. So uh, I mean, if if they go one and four in that stretch, I think it's clear this is not a tournament team. It, it would take a massive. Uh, no, they can't go. They can't go one and four unless they pull off some ridiculous rally. No, they they can't go one and four, especially when three of them are at home. Uh, no, they they've got a, you know, all of those teams in that group have had their bad moments as well. And in fact, there's very few teams in the Big Ten that haven't, with the exception of maybe Wisconsin and Purdue, and maybe a couple others. Michigan's had some bad games. Michigan State's had some bad games. Illinois. Lost the other night to a bad team, yeah. Uh, so it's um, it's not just Iowa. Uh, and what's going to happen is the teams that improve from here on out are the ones that are going to be standing at the end. Uh, we've got a lot of improving to do. There's there's no question about it. And and that's my point. I mean, we're we're two games into this. I don't know if it's a slide right. you call it. It's been two games, and granted, both these games are bad losses. I don't care if it's on the road or not. This Nebraska game on the road at Nebraska will likely end up being at least a quad two loss. I'm guessing it'll maybe be quad three. Uh, it won't be quad four like the Eastern Illinois game, but it's going to be a bad loss. Um, so, I mean, you have those two losses, but you're right. Every team – did Michigan win tonight? They were they were losing to uh, Central they Michigan. Were, they were in a battle. Yeah, they were in a battle. They uh, they lost 63-61 to Central. There you go. And Central's, so, Central's terrible. Yeah. C- Central's five and eight. Four, four and eight before this win, Gary. So uh, – I'm not saying that this team's a tournament team. I'm just saying I need more. I need to see more. And Sunday, we're going to get a quick turnaround. We're going to get to, to see this team on Sunday against a good Penn State team. We'll know more then. Dom says, Coach Close, why would Fran not have had his sons walk on so he can get two more talented players? Never understood that. I, that's been a discussion for four to five years, Gary. Is there more involved than that, or is it just a matter of kid deserves a scholarship? And there's – how do you feel about that issue? Yeah, you know, they, they, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, you know, if the kid's good enough to have a scholarship, then give him a scholarship. I, I don't – I can see where they could do that. Uh, but, um, you know, you want to be a scholarship player. Uh, so I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, Kevin Moore, Gary Close, the karate kid. What's the <laughs> reference on that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. CJ <laughs> says, uh, Coach, was there a time when you knew a season was lost and started playing younger guys for the next season? Did you ever have a year like that? No. No, you, you, that's not fair to the guys that are in the program. You, you play you play the guys that deserve to play, and you play every game like it's your last, and you play it right to the very end. That's the only way you can look at it, and that's exactly what they'll do, I'm sure. All right, Gold says, Coach, with all due respect, every team deals with injuries. I agree with that totally. The um, problem is this team doesn't have the margin of error that some yes. other teams got. When they, you know, you, all teams are affected by injuries in different ways. We're not deep, and uh, and that's a problem. I, there's no there's no question about it. Uh, but it's also reality. And um, like I said, when we've got everybody there and we've got a chance to practice and play, then I'll then I'll have a better idea of the, the uh, potential of the team. Um, Ryan wants to know if you had any head coaching job in the Big Ten, what offense, what offense would you run if you had a head coaching job in any Big Ten school? Oh, I'm not giving that out in case I get one. <laughs> oh, great answer, by the way. That's why you're the karate kid. Uh, you Ari Gold says, on a scale of one to ten, apparently this is for me. I'm supposed to rate their athleticism, Gary. How about that? On a scale of one to ten, please rate Iowa's athleticism. I mean, that's a hard. I mean. When we throw out a number, I guess I'd say five. I mean, I, I think they've got some deep. I don't think Ulysses is, I think Ulysses is a decent athlete. I think Tony Perkins is a very good athlete. Um, I'm disappointed with Patrick McCaffrey's defense and rebounding because I think he's above average from an athleticism standpoint. I think his brother's a better rebounder than him, and he's five inches shorter than him and and uh, maybe not as athletic. So that's frustrating to me. Uh, but you're right. As, as it relates to comparing this team to other Big Ten teams like a Michigan state or Ohio state every year under Fran, Iowa gives up girth. It gives up athleticism. And that has been a problem, right? Iowa plays more of a finesse style than a, 
ground and pound. Is that accurate, Gary? I mean, your Wisconsin teams. Yeah, but let's 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 be honest. There's a lot more athletes in Michigan than there are in Iowa. Uh, that's yeah. not to say you can't win with Iowa players because you can. Um, uh, and so uh, that's 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 part of the deal uh, when you're coaching at a place like Iowa. Not that you can't go out and get athletes, and not that they're not athletes in Iowa, but the numbers are not as great as they are in places like Michigan and Ohio and Indiana. It's just it's just not the case. And Carrie, good, great uh, comment here from Carrie. Uh, she says, "If I wonder if the team is struggling with who to look to as a leader with the, on the court when Connor is out for a while, others had to step up and it had to be hard to get back to normal. So, um, I mean, obviously Philip is an old guy, but he's only been here for, this is his second year here. Is, is that maybe a, a question that needs to be asked right now? Who steps up? Who's a vocal leader when, I mean, I would think it'd be Chris. I mean, he's been in the program now. This is year three for, for Chris, but he's, I mean, is that a question you have vocal? I don't, I don't know. No. Yeah. I think, I, I think they lack leadership. I don't think there's any doubt. Um, and I don't know where that's going to come from. My, my initial reaction would be Connor uh, and, and potentially Chris, but Chris, you know, I, I, I'm not around every day and in practice. So I, you know, it's purely a guess. Chris is not a vocal kid, right or wrong. I mean, that's not, not good or bad. It doesn't, you know, it's just the way that's just the way he is. Now a lot, some leaders can just do it just by the way they play. And he certainly has done that at times. So we need him to really step up to it. He had 17. I, I would call it a quiet 17. Not not bad for, uh, you know, being out for as long as he has been. And it's going to take him a little while to get his timing back and his conditioning. But he's got to really – he's got to take it to another level uh, for this team to be uh, as good as it, it potentially can be. And it, it's in there. It's, it's just got, it's just gotta, it's just gotta come out. Um, I, I don't even know how to, t to piece apart this comment here, Gary, do you want to try to read this? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, know what it means. I don't by, by the way, I was at the game where they pelted uh, Santa with snowballs. It was, uh, Oh, is this a real thing? Yeah, this happened in Franklin Field way, way back in the 60s when the Eagles were terrible. Now they're the best team in the NFL. It's not even close. Uh, but uh, they were get, they, they were getting their butts kicked. And, Dallas, may, Dallas, Dallas fans may disagree with you. Oh, uh, we should have won that. We should have won that game by 21 points. We basically gave that to them. But anyway, they made the dumb mistake of putting Santa in a car and uh, having him travel around Franklin Field. It was a, there was a track because it was a University of Pennsylvania field with a track and they had a track around it and they put Santa in a car going around a track and they didn't clean out the snow from the stands. And unfortunately Santa took a few. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that our, uh, our, I uh, didn't throw any, uh, but I did, I did watch. What was the game? It was a football game the other day that uh, the, what was that game that uh, was it? It wasn't the doubt. No, it couldn't have been the day. What, there was a game in the NFL the other day where, the officials announced to the crowd that if there were any more snowballs thrown, they were going to penalize uh, the, the home team. I can't remember who, what game that was. It was, was one game. game where I did see a lot of snowballs coming down, but I don't remember which. Maybe it was a Buffalo yeah. game. I think it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think it was, Bills. See, that's what James said. Um, we do have James, a final caller of the night, folks. We need to wrap this thing up. James, welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we could all be better with the win, but. You know, it happens sometimes, especially me as a basketball coach. I definitely understand it happens sometimes. But one thing that I've noticed and I feel like I've noticed is, you know, Fran used to always get on their guys, right? Like, it seemed like he'd get on them more. Like, oh, he, he got on them in that second half. There was he, one. He one, did, one, but, like, it seemed like it was half. too late. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the first half, it didn't seem like it was as much. And sometimes it seems like, like I'm not saying he's a great coach. He's done a lot for us. I'm not trying to say anything about him. Like, he does a lot for us. But sometimes it just seems like he waits too long to do stuff. Does that make sense? Well, that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's an observation. Uh, I, I don't think it's coaching. Um, I don't, I'm not saying I think it's a I lack of like... execution, a lack of effort. And, uh, well, lack of effort is coaching, isn't it, Gary? Right. Well, a little bit, a little bit, but I mean, it's, you know, you can only coach can only do so much. Uh, and then it comes down to, Hey, come on, let's go. Uh, and so, you know, until you're at every practice and, and watching what's going on, you really don't know. You're just, you're just taking a guess. Um, but I, I think um, I think the way they play, John Wooden could have been on the bench and they're not going to win that game. 
I agree with you. I don't. I think a little bit has to do with coaching, obviously. Anytime you saw a little bit has to do with coaching, I don't think as much of it has to do with coaching as people think has to do with coaching. But obviously, I think there's still a little part to it. But one thing I noticed, too, is I feel like a lot of times we're just settling for shots. You know, like we can't get the layups to go. We can't get I the things. We just start settling for threes, and it like gets annoying because it's like, yes, you can't make a layup. But what happens if you, instead of shooting a three, you hit a dump off pass or you get it to Robracha and get a kick out three, which is a better shot than just shooting something well, up. I'll you say know this, a lot of bad shots. So like <laughs> there was one point in this game, I believe it was early in the second half where it was like an 18 point game. And I actually verbalized this. I said, you know, they can get some stops and get in transition. They can get back in this game quickly and they got to stop. And Patrick runs down the court and throws up some contested falling away shot at a weird angle off the glass. I've defended the McCaffrey boys on a number of occasions, and you know, I'm not going to group the two together. Patrick takes way too many dumb shots, and he, he's got to figure out a way to rein that in. I, he's talked about that publicly, how he's trying yeah. to take better shots. D- d- can you agree on that, especially in transition, Gary? Yeah, I'd be curious how many free throws he's shot because it, 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 it doesn't, not very doesn't feel to me he gets to the free throw line very much. And with that size and his ability, he, he, he should be getting the free throw line a lot more. But if you're shooting him quick – or if you're shooting fadeaways, you're not going to draw very many fouls. And um, he, he's taken a few or too many of those. And one thing that also scares me too is like, obviously the change of turnaround, you get 18 games. That's a lot more than I think people think. 18 games, you know, 18 games less is a lot more than people think to turn the season around for sure. Games. But the thing with me is like, if you're already, if you can't play physical teams, a lot of teams in the Big Ten are going to be physical because they see you can't play physical. And then you struggle even more on the road to shoot because look at every game they played on the road. I mean, I'm catching news or site too with TCU and Clemson, where like it just seems like they can't get anything to fall at all. I mean, yes, they lost Eastern Illinois, but they got shots to fall because they were playing at home. Does that make sense? So the defense was just was terrible. So like if you can't get shots going on, on the road, then they know that they're just gonna play you physical. And if something doesn't change with like the mindset and the mentality, it could be a long year. Well, here's the other problem this creates, Gary. We were all complaining about the attendance at Carver. You know, for the Wisconsin game, yeah, for the Iowa State game, they, this ain't helping. And, and and yeah, students will be back, but I wonder what. It was hard to get people in into Carver prior. P- people are not going to be showing up for these home games. I mean, I was. I will, I'll, I'll be willing to bet that that place will be full or nearly full for Indiana. I disagree. What day of the week is that? Well, it's during the week. No way. It definitely, if it's during the week, I definitely disagree. And even on the fact that, like, we'll see. I feel, but I mean, I just hope that they can turn around. Like, what do you think? I mean, obviously, the break does cost you because we, uh, me coaching too, we had a big break, you know, we had a big break and that kind of, we came out sloppy in practice, you know, after our five day or week break we had for our team, we came out sloppy in practice. Obviously, the break has something to issue, but what do you think the, like, do you think that was the only issue? Or do you think there's a bigger issue, Court, uh, Gary? Well, I think uh, I think it's a number of things. I, I think what they need is they need some time to practice and get back to how they were playing. They they've had very little of that. They 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 came back on the twenty sixth, so they had they had three days of practice. One of which is but the day before the game, where you don't do much. They they need a chance to really with everybody. Um, the, you know, this break where those guys were hurt did not help. Because when they were playing and practicing, they were playing pretty well. I mean, they killed Iowa State. They gave Duke a good game. They've had some good performances. It's not like they've been like this the whole year. Could have and easily they got some Wisconsin. injuries. Yeah, they they could have beaten Wisconsin without two starters. So it's you know they've had their moments. Uh, I just think they need a chance to get everybody back and get a chance to practice and play. And like I've said, in two or three weeks, I'll be able to get a better idea of of the potential of this team, assuming that everybody stays healthy and and uh, they get a chance to get back to where they were. Um, because if they get back to where they were, then they got a chance to beat anybody. If they don't, uh, then they won't. I mean, that's, that's obvious. But um, I think they've really been hurt by the injuries, the lack of practice, the breaks. And, um, and, and probably, you know, and, and not playing well. They're, they're obviously not playing well. But um, until they get a chance to really get together and, and play and practice, uh, I'm still going to wait and see. Um, I, I think they still got a chance to be better, than, obviously better than what they're playing now. One more question. Everybody, everybody in the chat, Gary, is going to say you're making excuses. But I will say this. You are you're, – you're giving us an, a take uh, on this situation that 
I have not heard anybody else. I mean, obviously you're a coach for a reason. None of us are. So you're giving us a take that no one else is throwing out there. And it's a valid one. They, they, I mean, I, I expected something different due to the break, but you're right. How much, I mean, these guys were on break. They weren't practicing together. Um, I don't know how much work Chris has gotten. You see it all the time during this period of time. You see teams get beat. The other night, Auburn almost gets beat at home to a Florida team that's under 500, and they, it takes a basket at the buzzer to win. It, this time of year is crazy. And then uh, when you've got a team that doesn't have a great margin of error, uh, a team that's trying to put people in new positions, um, and they got their best player not playing by far, or potentially their best player, um, it's it does sound like excuses, but it's reality. Now, if in two weeks they've got everybody and they're playing like this, hey, then they're bad. Um, but I, I, I I've seen them play too good a basketball this year to say uh, that this is that this is how good they are. I, I don't believe yeah. that they're they're not playing well, um, and they're getting outworked, which is which is alarming. But I, I don't think that'll last. I, well, I agree with you, and, and I'll, I'll defer back to 2017 when they were they were bad. Right. And they lost a lot that previous year. I think that was the, the year Woodbury left, Gasell, uh, Utah. Um, maybe it was a year after removed to that. I, Jock was on the, those teams as well, but never they were really bad. But they were bad early. Right. I mean, they went to their tournament, wherever it was, Cancun or whatever, and lost to Louisiana Lafayette and lost to Wichita State. They were bad that year collectively. We've seen a month and a half of really good basketball. And we were both Gary. We were both at that Wisconsin game, and I think we both agreed after the game those looked like two tournament teams, not high seeded teams, but two really good teams. That was less than two weeks. Ago. Well, it was what two weeks ago now. Am I we mm-hmm. am I right on the timeline there? Something right. like that. And I, I just I refuse to accept the fact that this team is as bad as they've shown these last two games. Given the fact that they won at Seton Hall, they beat a good Clemson team. They blew the doors off an Iowa State team that made it to the Sweet Sixteen last year, and I know they're different as well could have easily beaten Wisconsin, took them to overtime. So I, I agree with you, and uh, I think your optimism is well-founded based on the facts. I got, James, I, got, I got one more big question that I've always kind of wondered, and I think Gary will help me with this. Fran's been here how long? 12 years? I think this is 13th year. 13th year, yeah. So, yeah, like, there's a lot of times where, like, what? Why do you think he doesn't? You think it's a recruiting, or do you think it's like the athletes have? Like we have very athletic players. I'm not saying that, but like, why do you think the defense always seems to be one of the issues? He's shooting issue too, but defense has always been something where like they give up a lot more points than they should in times, or defense is what hurts them a lot of games. Why do you think that is? Do you have any idea on that? Well, it's a good question. I think you know it's um, you know everybody teaches what they how they want to teach what they want to teach. Some people are strong in some areas and not as strong in others. Um, I think when they've been good, they've played good defense. And, but I think you can say that for every team. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, this year they've been inconsistent as far as that goes, um, but they've been inconsistent offensively as well. So um, it's a team in progress. I think you've got to remember they lost two really good players. They lost the fourth player taking the NBA draft who's starting in the NBA right now. I mean, come on. That's a player. Uh, and so that's a hole you've got to fill. Well, the hole is going to be filled by Chris Murray. Now he's hurt. Um, and as we mentioned before, they got guys that are playing in different roles than they were last year. And it's an, it's an, it's an adaption they've got to go through. And then you don't have everybody around. And it, so there's a lot of things that have contributed to this. Now, in two weeks, if they're playing like this still, then, then you got something to worry about. Uh, but until they get a chance to do that and let uh, Chris get in shape, let Connor get back in shape, um, let's get some good hard practices in two or three in a row, uh, then then we can have a better idea of the potential of this team. Um, right now, uh, it's up in the air. There, there's no question. This is a discouraging loss. I think it's more discouraging from an effort standpoint than anything else. And I'll be shocked if the effort isn't a lot better uh, when they play Penn State, I will be totally shocked if that doesn't yeah. happen. And they still got to execute, but um, uh, so I think we I think we got to wait a couple of weeks before you really can make a final or at least a, a better idea of of the potential of this team. I'll obviously be very concerned though if we don't see immediate effort Sunday. You know, no I, doubt, I no doubt. I think we'll see something Sunday, James. Anything else? For no, me? for sure. And uh, see you Saturday. I'm hoping for a win, obviously. And- 
hopefully we can get some going there and sunday we'll be watching for sure and hopefully the girls can keep winning because right now for basketball at least some a glimmer of hope at least for now we'll be here james thank yep, you for the call yep, enjoy Thanks, the night. all right final question of the night Go, goes to ben he says how would you define success for this program is one sweet 16 in over 20 years asking too much because we are one of the few power fives out there that haven't achieved this feat this century well, I think um, you're always evaluated on how well you do in the NCAA tournament. I don't know if that's totally fair, um, but that's just the way it is. And that's why the Big Ten has taken a lot of heat lately because they haven't won a national championship in 20-some years. That's just the way reality is. And so Iowa's always going to be uh, questioned until they can go deeper in the, in the tournament. Fran would be the first one to say that. I mean, he knows that. Um, but I will also say this, it is hard to win in the NCAA tournament. It is hard. Uh, it's not, it's not easy, especially for teams like Iowa and Wisconsin and some of these other teams that are not going to blow you away with uh, unbelievable talent. You, you got to be playing well, you got to get some breaks. Um, you got to get some luck with the draw and things like that. So, um, there's no question that, uh, your NCAA resume is huge and uh, Iowa's resume has got to get better, but Fran would be the first person to tell you that. They're, I mean, they know that, and uh, hopefully um, in one of these years they'll get on a run and, and advance uh, farther in the tournament because it's, uh, it's quite a ride when you do. Just so everybody's aware, the Hawkeye women were up by 23 at one point. Purdue has now cut the lead to 13 with a uh, little over a quarter to go. So when we log off here, I'm going to watch this game, and hopefully the women will – close this thing out um purdue fighting and and there's a reason why i believe they're 10 and 2 10 and 3 in the season so that's a good boilermaker team reminder to everybody please donate to the channel if you haven't done so please consider supporting the channel this way you can also sponsor the show reach out to me from the eye of the storm at outlook.com follow us on twitter at from the hawkeye on twitter at from the hawkeye on instagram from the hawkeye of the storm on facebook of course share the stream out on social media if you've enjoyed the content please share it out tell about i mean word of mouth is great tell your friends Bring a friend with you next time. And, of course, if you want to become a premium subscriber and get early releases, select videos, and uh, a few other perks along the way, click the Join button next to From the Hawkeye of the Storm here on YouTube. A reminder, too, to shop Amazon with us. There's a link in every description of our videos. You can shop Amazon. Anything that you typically buy on Amazon, your everyday shopping, do it through our link, and uh, it will support this show as well. And, of course, our From the Hawkeye of the Storm merch, it's available, and we've got more designs coming see information on our merchandise by means of the description below as well. Gary, I'll be back with coach Don Patterson on Saturday after the music city bowl, which will kick off at 11 a.m. Central time on ABC, the the, uh, Hawkeyes and the Wildcats of Kentucky. So drill MVP, our regular caller will have another (laughs) opportunity to banter Uh, myself and coach Patterson live approximately two 30. Um, we're not going to go real long because we've got the college football playoffs later that day. We've got both semifinal games, um, TCU, Michigan, and of course, Ohio state, Georgia. So, uh, Gary, we've got Iowa post game with you on Sunday. Uh, any quick thoughts, final thoughts on Penn state? Is that a, is that a day game night game? When is that? Four 30, four 30 on Sunday. Good. I won't interfere with my Eagles. <laughs> when the Eagles, when do the Eagles play? Noon. Okay. So you'll, yeah, that, that's a, what's well, a full afternoon for you though. Uh, oh man, it'll be perfect. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they uh, respond to this one. This, this yeah, is I about agree. as low as it's been in quite a while. And this is when you find out uh, who your champions are. And I, I think there's some in that locker room. We're just gonna have to wait and see. And the, the calendar will flip. We'll start a new calendar year. So you can kind of flush everything and, uh, Hopefully we're talking about a victory and uh, it's on the road. So <laughs> it's uh, road wins are good to get going to be a challenge. And then they get Indiana at home and then they go back to the East coast against Rutgers and then Michigan at home. So uh, uh, in summary, folks, just if you're late to the show, the Hawkeyes falling tonight to the Nebraska Cornhuskers 66 to 50. Uh, I was second straight disappointing defeat. Hawkeyes struggling mightily from the field, 26% on the night, seven of 28 from three nearly shot as well from, three as they did from two um, in this game. Uh, struggled the free throw line, 63% from the line, got out-rebounded 54-50. to 50. 
the one thing that uh, actually was an improvement today, turnovers. So just turned the ball over six times, which I guess is a, a, a good sign to an extent because we've been concerned about turnovers last few dates out. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. Aggressive team on Sunday, experienced team, and you're on the road against a team that uh, is in the hunt for it. I mean, I think Penn State looks like a tournament team early from what I've seen. Uh, the little I've seen them, I have been impressed. Uh, they've got a, they got some good wins. They got some questionable losses too. They've been a little up and down, but they're they're going they're going in the right direction. There's no there's no question. It's a different a different Penn State team. So uh, I was going to have to play well to beat them. Michael Weber, fly Eagles, fly. We'll end it there on that. <laughs> Coach, appreciate the time as always. We'll talk right. to you soon. Sounds good. All right, for Coach Gary Close and Corey Brad here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We'll talk to you soon.